Welcome back to part four. We are on the home stretch now, so this should be the last presentation on this particular section on the cubic wave field. Just on the graphic on the screen there, I just want to highlight it just for clarity because we have been mentioning um, X planes and Y planes and Z axes and so on. I just want to make sure that the, that the orientation of those particular coordinates is clear in our minds. That the Y plane, for example, moves left to right along the X axis. We mentioned in uh, videos one to three that the uh, Z plane and the Y plane have a reciprocal 90 degree relationship to one another. So as the Z plane moves in and out of the page, the uh, Y plane moves left and right. And just before I mention the function of the of the X plane, it's really important that while we're considering uh, images within the wave field, that we think of, of of those images is purely light. There are no particles. There are no. There's no solidity. There's no form. It is purely light. It is the projection of light from the center seed out into the wave field, and we must always consider that as light. So what happens now with the x the x plane is that it rotates. It rotates like a lighthouse, and so it casts a a centrifugal beam, if you like, out into the wave field. And because the Z-plane is fully extended away from the, the hub and the Y-plane is centred in the centre of the wave field, the rotation of the X-axis creates this flat disc. But it's not a static flat disc as we maybe highlighted in the earlier uh, presentations. This is actually a dynamic moving, rotating disc. It's rotating from west to east. The rotation of that X-plane is analogous to a performer spinning a flame on the end of a rope. The faster that the rope spins, the more solidity the image of the flame on the end of the rope has. It appears to form quite a complete circle as the rope is spun. The faster the rope is spun, the more solidity the ring of fire appears to have. And so with all three planes working together, with the with the X plane rotating through 360 degrees, with the Y plane being centered in the center of the wave field, and with the Z plane extended fully away from the hub out at the rim, what will manifest is, is an imaged flat disk in the zero position. And this is how the inert gases materialize in our illusionary world. So when these three planes are working together they generate the movie which is effectively the wave cycle. Now I will deal with the wave in its own right in later videos but for the moment it's better if we conclude the description of the cubic wave field we have all of the information that we need from the wave field to be able to interpret how the images are generated. And now we will spend some time looking at the driving force, polarity, what the seed is, how the projectionist involves himself in his own projection. And we will deal with all of those things in subsequent presentations. So I'd just like to recap now some of the properties that the cubic wave field must possess in order for it to act as a cosmic projector. The internal surfaces of the cubic wave field are mirrored. This facilitates light bounce to bounce backwards and forwards across a wave field. But the mirrors will also allow light to pass through them into neighbouring wave fields. The light that initially starts off inside a an undivided wave field is pure cosmic mind. It's pure white light. This is beyond our senses and images or experiences that are beyond our senses appear black. This undivided light is pure cosmic mind. 
It is the process of cosmic mind thinking that actually divides that white light into the entire electromagnetic spectrum. These divisions of the, of the undivided light are projected into the wave field and then they are transmitted to every wave field and the process of projection and reflection continues to an internal infinity and back again to the cube, the master cube that holds the entirety of creation within it. Cosmic mind thinks what he knows and expresses what he thinks by introducing three internal planes into the cubic wave field. This has the effect of dividing the wave field up into eight, which is the basis of the octave wave. The Z and the Y plane have a 90 degree reciprocal uh, relationship to one another. They act like a cosmic piston, if you like, as Z planes move in and Y planes move away from the hub. And likewise, when the uh, Z plane moves away from the hub towards the rim, the Y plane returns from the rim back to the hub. So they work in a reciprocal uh, relationship. The X plane rotates through 360 degrees and that introduces motion into the wave field. So we are no longer dealing with static images anymore inside a wave field. They are now dynamic and moving. And that movement is also transmitted to every other wave field. And so this is how our illusionary movie is generated. So there are still some topics that we need to cover in order to gain an understanding of the full projection system, but when we pull all the system together I'm hoping that it will be quite straightforward uh, a process to follow. Walter was at pains to describe the fact that the actual process that generates our illusionary world is very, very simple. It's just the effect of that process is, is what creates all the complexity. Like a kaleidoscope, it's a very, very simple process, but with just a, f a few beads and mirrors, beautiful designs and tapestries can be created. So very, very complex images can result from very, very simple processes. And this is the ultimate in simple processes. So I leave a link for the above website down in the show notes. So please subscribe and if you have any comments just drop me a line.